So in order to read this JSON file that we have created, we're going to now create a class called read JSON file with a public static void main. Now we will be using another class from the jar file, which is called JSON parser. In majority of the cases, you'll find it that whenever these packages are given out to you, they do come up with their own parsers that allow you to parse it from one format to another. So here's our try catch block. In this catch block, we were going to catch different kinds of exceptions. One of the exceptions that we're going to be catching will be file not found exception. It means you're trying to look for the file that does not really exist. So here we can do print stack trace. Now let me copy this and paste it three more times because it's the same body, it's just different exceptions are being used. So instead of file not find exception, found exception, in the next case we're going to do our IO exception. And then we're going to do parse exception. And finally a generic expression. As generic, the most generic expression should always be towards the end. Now it is asking you what kind of parse would you like me to use? Of course, we want to use the parse exception from the JSON package. Now, these exception lines are currently being saying that, you know, there is nothing in the try block that we're going to make these three lines reachable. So as we put those instructions here, then those errors will slightly go away. We're going to go away. So, slowly, these errors will go away as we put these statements. So, the first one we're doing is we're creating an object in which we would like to parse. So, we're using the parser object to parse what? To parse the file that we will be reading. And this file will be myjson.json. And this file has the data in string form. So we're going to read this data. And we will going to then, after we read it, parse it into an object of type object. Then we will convert this object into a JSON object, which could very well be done in one step. But I'm purposely doing it in two steps to break, it, to break the logic. Once that is done, now I would like to extract those elements that I created one by one. And I can extract them by their keys and their values will be returned. So let me create a string name equals to JSON object dot get name. So name is the key the value will be returned and will be stored in the name. And I can simply display the output right there and then so that you can see it is actually reading this. Name is, and then I can display the name of the person. Then I could repeat the same code for location. Now, the last thing that I want to do is I want to be able to iterate through that array of multiple values. And you can see right here, this is the array I'm talking about, courses, which has three courses. So now I will going to loop array. So JSON array called courses array.
So now we were going to grab the JSON object whose name is Courses. And then since it's an array, we were going to cast it into a JSON array type. Make sure you organize your imports. Control Shift O is the keyboard sh shortcut, or you can go under Source and Organize Import. Once you do this, we will going to now use one of the Java collection classes, which allow me to loop through a collection. Loop through a collection. And why do I need to use this special class? Because generally speaking, when you talk about an array, is array fixed size? Is the size of the array fixed? We know exactly how many elements are there. So I can always say the name of the array dot length, and it's going to give me however many elements are there. So I can loop through that array those many number of times. But are collections fixed sized? No. Collections are dynamically sized. There are varying sizes. So in order to loop through them, Java has provided us with collection iterators. So JSON array, even though it's called an array, it's not really an array. Because remember in my last example, how did I store value in this array? I did not say list index number. I called a method add. So this allowed me to add items to it. Similarly, to add items to my JSON object, I used the method put that shows it's not an array because I did not use an equals to operator. So these are built-in collections. So I basically, in my last example, generated a collection which comprises of course, name, and location, and one of the collection item, which is courses, itself is a collection. So now I'm reading that collection, so I gotta read it back the same way I put it in there. So for that purpose, Java has a built-in class called iterator. Iterator. Now what I am reading is of type string. So I can literally say whatever I want my iterator class to be. So this is my courses array dot iterator. It will basically tell me how many items are there that I need to iterate through. Okay. So my iterator object holds a reference of the course array dot iterator. Iterator method of the course array collection will tell me how many items do I have to loop through, or just gives a reference rather, gives a reference point. Now I'm going to start my while loop. In my while loop, I will going to say that iterator, you should keep iterating as long as has next returns true, means as long as there is somebody to read. You should automatically stop when you run out of values. And every time you iterate, I want you system.out.println to say course, and then spit out the course, which is iterator.next. So iterator.next is a built-in function that allows you to display that next value. So in this try block, we are pretty much opening the file, creating a JSON object, extracting the values from the file through the JSON object into the local string objects. Then we have created a JSON array which allows us, with the help of iterator, to traverse through this entire list of values. Now, if I run it, here I have my output. The name, the location, and the courses.